Living in a shoe house. Once upon a time, there was a little old woman who lived in a shoe. Wait, what? Can we verify this? Ah, another day without my dear husband. Ah. Holy wow! It is true. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Pan camera. So, as you can see, this shoe stood near a great forest, and was so large that it served as a house for the old lady and all her children, of which she had so many that she struggled to remember all their names. Philip. Um, mother, we don't have a Philip in our family. Really? Oh. I thought I had named one of you Philip. <laughs> There is Peter, if you'd like. It's okay, Stark. Just give me my glasses. Mark. No, don't call him. You do it, Stark. My name is Mark, Mother. Oh, I miss your father so much. It's so difficult to remember your names. Although the little old woman was forgetful, she was very fond of her children, and they only thought of the best way to please her. Strong Arm, the eldest, cut down trees for firewood. Peter made baskets of wickerwork. Mark was chief gardener. Lizzie milked the cow, and Jenny taught the younger children to read. Now the old woman and her family did not always live in the shoe house. Only a month ago, she and her family dwelt in a nice house covered with ivy, and her husband was a woodcutter like Strongarm. But there lived in a huge castle beyond the forest a fierce giant, who one day came and laid their house in ruins with his club, while the old woman had gone to the river to fetch some water. Pity humans! The children ran hither and thither, and the woodcutter tried his best to defend his family, which angered the giant ever more. No! <laughs> no prisoner! The giant carried off the poor woodcutter to his castle beyond the forest, and when the little old woman came home, she found that her house was in ruins. And her children, who came out there hiding, narrated all that had happened. We will not let him take away your father like that. Let's go search for him. Maybe the giant has left him somewhere in the woods. And so off the family went, looking for the woodcutter. They walked deeper and deeper into the woods when the sun had begun its descent. Mother, look, the giant shoe. Armstrong, my son. Strong, our mother. Yeah, that's not the pressing matter right now. The sun is setting, and we don't have a house to go back to. How about we take shelter in the shoe until we free your father and build a new house? Great idea, mother. Thanks. Um. Jenny, mother. My name is Jenny. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> And so, before dusk came, all the children worked to turn the shoe into a house. Peter and Strongarm put a roof to it. Jenny and Lizzie cut a door. Mark, along with the other little kids, washed and cleaned and mopped the insoles. And together, they all turned the shoe into a dwelling. Where there is a will, there is a way, right, Lena? Mother, it's Lizzie. Ugh, never mind. And so the family slept in the shoe house that day, and for several other days, while Strongarm began to hatch a plan to free his father. He bought a dozen sharp swords, and Peter made as many strong shields and helmets. And Mark made as many crossbows and iron-headed arrows as possible. And when they were all done, they.
they took their mother's blessings and set off for the giant's castle. All the best, Armstrong! God! The next day, they came in sight of the giant's castle. Strongarm, leaving his brothers in a wood close by, strode boldly up to the entrance and seized the knocker. The door was opened by a funny little boy with a large head who kept grinning and laughing. <laughs> Hello, sir. Funny thing. I had a dream I was eating a giant marshmallow, and when I woke up, my pillow was gone. <laughs> what? I also ate an alarm yesterday. Phew, it was time consuming. <sighs> <laughs> How may I help you? Do you know where my father is, the old woodcutter? Ah, the poor man. I am very sorry for him. My evil uncle kidnapped him, and the part of the castle in which he is kept is heavily guarded by a dragon. All you need to do is touch its tail, which no one has ever been close to. And so, the little giant showed Strongarm the way to the place where his father was kept. The brave young man, fearing nothing, climbed up the stairs and reached the place. And to his surprise, he found the monster fast asleep. Wasting no time, Strongarm made short work of him by leaping into the air and landing near the beast's tail. Before the dragon could gain its senses, Strongarm touched his tail, at which the dragon jumped up, uttering a loud scream before dissipating into thin air. Whoa! You did it! You finished the evil monster! Show me the way, kid. The little giant led him to a door which opened to a courtyard, where Strongarm saw his poor father tied up in chains. Armstrong, my son! Really? Father? We must now return to the little old woman. After her sons, she became anxious. Very, very anxious. And while she was in this state, an old witch came up to her and said, I will help you. I, the great old witch, hate the giant and wish to see the end of him. Come, sit on my broomstick. Oh, thank you, great old fairy. I am most anxious. I am a witch, not a fairy. Now hop on. The old witch then took the little old lady on her broomstick and they sailed off through the air, straight to the giant's castle. But when they reached there, the giant was nowhere to be found, for the beast had woken up with corns and tender feet that morning and was in great pain. He set out into the woods, looking for his lost shoe, until he came to the spot where the old lady and her children lived. There, he saw his old shoe and with a laugh that shook the trees, he thrust his foot into it, breaking through the roof. The children in great alarm rushed about inside the shoe and frightened and trembling scrambled through the door. By this time, the witch and the little old lady, as also Strongarm, his brothers and his father, reached up to the spot. Gilly, gilly! Gilly, gilly, what? Oh, how did your power grow? I have been practicing ever since you destroyed my land. <laughs> but as the giant approached towards the old witch, Strongarm and his brother shot several arrows at him, and within moments, the giant was down on the ground. <laughs> That was the end of him. Oh, my carpenter husband, I have missed you so. I am a woodcutter. <laughs> you guys are adorable. Tell you what, I will help you rebuild your house that you once lived in. Oh, thank you, sorceress. 
I am a witch for crying out loud. And I am Strongarm. Oh, you guys, stop fussing over it. As you know, Charles Dickens once said, What's there in a name? It was William Shakespeare. Don't be silly, Stark. Ugh.